Alright, well this is the season finale of the game, episode 10 entitled Reshuffling the Deck. Man, what a journey. And I can't wait to do a follow-up video. It's pretty much just going to be me talking about the entire season as a whole, my thoughts on it, and let me just say I enjoyed it. Yes, it had its weak points here and there, but overall, I feel like the game is back and stronger than ever. And if there is a quote-unquote Paramount Plus Season 2 or Season 11, Hopefully it gets more than 10 episodes. I'm not asking for 20. I'm not asking for 30, but just maybe a handful more episodes to kind of flush things out a bit better. But again, reshuffling the deck. I give this episode a 10 out of 10. I really enjoyed it. It had me on the edge of my seat the entire time, especially like the last five minutes or so, because things really hit the fan. But before moving forward in the review, make sure you take a moment to hit the thumbs up button to show you like the video. Hit subscribe as we get closer to 200,000 subscribers here on the channel. Follow me on social media. Links are in the description below. And in order to keep up with the content that I post, hit the bell icon to select all. And let's move forward. So, the episode starts off. And this is kind of a recurring thing within the episode. And that's Jameson taking pills, the same ones he got from his uh, dude all the street, in order to help with his pain in the ankle. Uh, he's getting ready for his job at the uh, strip club. He's dressed out dressed up as a cowboy but Brittany comes in and drags him out to meet everybody in the club and Jameson officially made the team so everybody's excited about that and from there um we have Malik congratulating Jameson on everything and the teammates ask Malik about everything you know in regards to the union to get better health care for the players but due to not enough owner membership votes on it it's a situation where he has to talk with the colonel because if not, you know, uh, Garrett is threatening to start a strike. And it's like, whoa, let's not go that far. But at the same time, Tasha is meeting with the colonel because remember, she's trying to buy the school that her daughter got kicked out of. Remember, after Simone cut her hair uh, in order to play that tennis game. So at this point, a deal is made. Originally, the colonel's like, fine, I can let you have the money or, you know, excuse me, I can... uh lends you the money but it's going to be a 51 percent interest of your agency but she manages to bring it down to 35 percent and then you know what fine tasha mack you got to deal because a lot of her money is tied up in investments and loans and other things like that and there's a board meeting to buy the school but it's happening very soon that's why she's willing to align herself with the colonel in order to buy this school as an act of revenge but when we get towards the end of the episode we find out this was a bad move on her part so let's go over to the last part of this conversation and it turns out that the colonel is excited about club end zone club end zone yes you know uh britney pitts was telling me about it it looks like that's going to be an exciting venture in itself oh okay club end zone yeah <laughs> so then we go over to the board meeting and tasha wins the vote Simone is booted out and she's dragged out. Well, she doesn't get dragged out because she doesn't want to be touched. But the same security guys that she always brought up whenever Tasha was threatening her, she gets uh, taken out by them because of the fact that the video of her cutting um, uh, Gia's hair went viral. And as a result, you know, that's a bad reflection of the school. So from there, she is congratulated by Brittany who then fires her due to the fact that she used her name for her own selfish goals. So Brittany loses everything. To be completely honest, I, I don't think Tasha is fully aware of the budding relationship between Jameson and Brittany. Because remember, she fired her assistant in episode one for having sex with Malik. So I thought that she made it clear to Brittany that any assistance of her, any assistant of hers is not to have relations with her clients and Jameson is a client. So I don't know. So Brittany loses it all. And we go over to the Malik and Colonel who are trying to come up with some agreement. You know, they're walking on the field. Malik is bringing a look. We have to make a compromise or there's going to be a strike. But then the Colonel hands him what he wanted all along. A pre-ownership contract if he signs, basically Malik, if you sign this contract right here expressing your loyalty to the owners, then you're one of us. As opposed to, you know, 
playing for another year. And that's what Malik is like. He doesn't feel like this is right due to the fact that, you know what, you could have done this at any time. As opposed to making me play for another year, $30 million before I get the ownership. But uh, the Colonel's like, hey, t uh, tell your mom about this and we'll figure things out. So Malik is having an argument with Caleb over signing the papers. Caleb's like, fool, sign this paperwork. But he calls his mom, but Tasha ignores it. And remember, this is at a point where these two aren't on speaking terms. Tasha's like, look, if it's about business, you call me. If it's about, you know, me as your mom, lose my damn number. But she's having... um interviews trying to get a new assistant since she fired Brittany. So we go over to Raquel and Garrett who are at the apartment and they talk about how Beyonce is singing the national anthem at the first game and Brittany actually storms in because obviously she just got fired and she's packing up. Raquel calls her out for trying to just run away every time that things get tough and then Jameson comes in because Raquel called her called him over and he tries to convince her to stay but he fails. I mean she he doesn't want her to stay because of him but because she needs to fight for what she wants to achieve in life and i mean one thing that kind of had me going eh, about this finale is the fact that we really didn't address what happened at the end of episode nine where he asked her to you know juice him up because of his ankle it's one of those things where it's like i'm pretty sure that would leave an effect but basically you know she's freaking out about losing everything losing club end zone the fact that you know i'm afraid to get involved with you because of the whole allison thing if you still have feelings for her but it's like she just needs some time to figure things out so we go over to malik who was just having a full-on argument with caleb it turns out that it's his fault for killing caleb or the fact that caleb's dead and that's why he is being haunted because he feels guilty Jameson comes in to help him because he's having a literal mental breakdown. Trust me, I've been there before. And he says, I don't need a doctor. I need to do something. So he needs to get this thing off his chest. So what happens at this point is the fact that he goes on live and talks about how he has a mental illness. And and if I, I watched this scene like three times because I'm trying to figure out how it's his fault. But I think maybe... Malik, it wasn't his fault that Caleb is dead, but due to the circumstances of it, he blames himself. So I believe when they were in high school, he threw he threw Caleb a pass, and this was a pass that if caught would break a receiver record, I believe. So Malik threw the pass. Caleb caught it, but then he took a bad hit and got paralyzed and eventually died. So I think that Malik has always been carrying that guilt around. And as a result, during the live stream, he talks about the importance of, you know, black people getting mental help, having it addressed and, you know, doing what's best for them instead of carrying the weight of the world on their shoulders. And it's interesting how we get all these different characters watching the live stream, Garrett and the team, the Colonel, Tasha, Brittany. And they all kind of, you know, stop what they're doing and take it in. And then Tasha shows up. And thankfully, her and Malik have a moment where they just apologize for everything. And um, from there, you know, Malik just decides, you know what? Hey, I want to work harder to get better. But yet again, we have a moment where we get these big character moments. But we skip ahead two weeks later to the Thursday night game. And it's like, wait, what? Like, what, 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 what happened? But the thing is... Um, before we did that, we saw Malik talking to Caleb who packed up his things and just left on the elevator because that's the end of Caleb. Because since Malik got this thing off his chest, he no longer has to carry that burden. So Caleb is gone. Now, um, Brittany's actually applying for a job as a hostess. And later on, we find out it's as a hostess at Club End Zone, basically her dream. So... We go over to Malik giving Jameson a number 13 jersey from a player named Frederickson, one of the first black players in the uh, professional football, and he said Jameson earned it. And I'm like, oh, man, that was a great moment. So um, it turns out that Brittany and Tasha have a moment at Club End Zone where Tasha doesn't want her working there, but Brittany pretty much pleads her case. Look, I left Las Vegas. I went to see my grandmother, and it's just like I just realized that I don't want to settle. I don't want to keep running away from things when things get hard. I want to prove myself. And look, I know I don't deserve a second chance, a third chance, or whatever. 
I just want to show you that I'm willing to earn your trust back and be the best fake niece to your fake aunt as I can. And Tasha says, fine, only at the home games are you allowed to work here part time. So thankfully, Brittany still, you know, gets to be a part of her dream because uh, Tasha even says, look, even though you went behind my back and broke my trust again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow you to be part of it, this by working here part time. Because remember, earlier in the season, I think um, Tasha sent a bunch of gift bags to the players and then um Brittany ended up charging people for like she charged like for like what was it like 500 or 800 dollars a basket and then Tasha found out about it so Brittany actually yeah she's been not the best assistant she's been utilizing Tasha's name without her you know um, can you know consent because in the last episode, Jason said, "Look, you need to tell Tasha about what you did about Club End Zone," and evidently she didn't do it. Hence, why she got fired at the beginning of the episode. Now, Garrett is actually talking with the Colonel, and Cur and he still hasn't signed the contract. So basically, he's freaking out because again, this is opening night. Beyonce is apparently sick, and Garrett's like, "How badly do you want me to sign a contract?" And then, based off what happens later, is it showing us or telling us that Garrett signed the contract that the Colonel had only if Raquel is allowed to sing the national anthem, even though it isn't shown that's what happened, happened, I guess it's to be assumed that's what happened. But speaking of power plays, Brittany actually has something for Tasha. And that's the fact that her photo with her daughter made the front of Mongol magazine. So she outdid Oprah. Finally. Now Malik, um, makes his case for better health care for the players. And, you know, the colonel is trying to get him to realize, look, where does it end? I understand what you're trying to do, but you've given up your, your uh, spot for ownership. The least you can do is be a hero to the team. So get the field, get to the field and play. But again, he's standing his ground. It's like, look, instead of four years, let's make it three years. Uh, players who have been, you know, there for three years. He's tr he's trying to get help, basically universal health care, if you will, for the players. But the colonel's like, look, we already have the best health care out of any co corporation in the world. And that's how we make money. It's like you're literally cutting into the pockets of those who make money from the football players. But it's like, yeah, y'all ain't the ones who are crushing your skulls, you know, bashing your skulls and other players every single game. So... He's trying his best to get the Colonel to move, and the Colonel is trying to compromise, but there's only so much Malik can do. So, it turns out uh, Brittany actually shows up to see Jameson and says, look, I left for a little while, and I, you know, I thought, stopped thinking about working with Tasha, the club end zone, but the one thing I couldn't stop thinking about was you, and... Brittany and Jameson decide to give them a chance. But like I said before, we really, at the end of episode nine, that's something you just don't shake. I mean, earlier in that episode, Jason made it clear to both Brittany and Jameson he doesn't want his daughter to deal with the hardships of the game. You know, like being involved with a professional football player isn't always easy. And look, just keep my daughter out of it. If you want to see my daughter, fine, but... All the flat that comes to being a football player don't make her a part of it. And he did when he asked her to hit him with the needle. So, again, we're just ignoring that. But he's like, well, hey, he's like, yeah, I'm glad you came back to see my first game. But I don't even know if we're playing. Well, hey, regardless, you're still going to score tonight. <gasps> Lucky. All right. So, going back to Club End Zone. Brittany and Raquel kind of have a moment where they make up, you know, she's all decked out, hair, dress and everything. It's like, hey, what are you doing dressed up like that? Keep watching. So Allison shows up and remember, this is J uh, Jameson's ex, a.k.a. the girl that ended up getting him. I'm not even going to blame her per se for getting him locked up. It's the parents that did that. But regardless, this is the white girl that he ended up in jail about. So she flew in from Europe to see Jameson's first game, and she's going to be in town for a while. And it's like, well, I hope to see you around, Brittany Pitts. Sure. And then she flips her hair, and it's like, uh-oh. So she's pissed off. And some people are thinking, like, you know, did Jameson invite her? I don't think so. I mean, remember that she told Brittany, 
yeah, I think I know you. I know you from uh, Hard Blocks. I recognize you from television. And I'm going to, I'm thinking that Jameson is going to be honestly like shocked and surprised. Like, uh, Allison, what are you doing here? And it's like, it's kind of suspicious that she shows up right as he is about to get hit. Basically, after he's made the team, after he's about to play the first game, it's like, oh, so you're not going to show up until after he's already signed the contract and everything. Mm -hmm. This is going to be like a Russell Wilson situation here. But in any case, uh, let's see here. He yeah he's taking the pills in the back so he's still taking the pills and I think his bottle's almost empty so it's just one of those things where it's probably going to run into the next season. Now um, after that we go over to Malik uh, the coach who's you know gassing up the team like hey camp was great we go out there we do our thing but then Malik holds the team back to actually talk about you know the situation that occurred with the colonel the deal that was made and it's basic well the offer in regards to the health care and the question is do we play or not basically yes i'm the spokesperson for the team you all put me in the position but whatever decision we make we need to make it as a team so the last five minutes of this episode holy crap so the colonel approaches tasha basically saying look club end zone is a hit it's amazing great teamwork there but the team should have been in the tunnel three minutes ago. So, if you don't talk some t sense into your son, if the team doesn't go out on the field and play, in order to make up for the losses that I will have to deal with if they go on some kind of strike, I'm going to end up selling Tasha Mac, agent, Tasha Mac Management Agency away brick by brick to recoup it. And she's like, no, nah, you can't do that, first of all. You don't have controlling interest in a company. You only have 35%. Ah, but I bought the bank two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, I bought the bank where you took out this huge loan in order to work on your expansion project. So with that loan, as well as the 35% interest on your company that I have that you gave me for the school, purchasing the school, which remember he said that, hey, I'm not going to sell that interest or, you know, in your company, basically... Uh, or that ownership percentage, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold on to it as collateral and you can buy it back from me anytime. But I'm willing to sell that if I lose a crap ton of money due to your son not making the right move by having the players play. So Tasha is like, wait, what? So what's going to happen is if they don't go get out on the field and pay, I'm going to take your loans out of default and demand you pay immediately. And if you don't, everything you have is mine holy crap so tasha's freaking out because her entire livelihood is on the line here um in regards to whether or not the team plays so raquel shows up singing the national anthem and again i have no idea how this happened but i'm guessing garrett signed the contract and as a result under the condition that Raquel got her shot at singing the national anthem? That's just my guess. So, while this is happening, the team walks out of the locker room, and the question is, okay, when they get on the field, because we never saw Malik giving the details of what happened with the colonel, we just know that he spoke with the team, and it was their vote. So, when they finally make it to the end of the tunnel, we see Malik raise his helmet, and he puts it on the field, and walks away. Then the rest of the team does the same. And for Jameson, I don't know what hurt more for him to do that by not playing when he finally got the chance to do so, or when he had to watch Allison when he watched that high school footage on the phone during the uh, interview he did, he did with Hard Blocks. Because you look at Jameson and everything he did to get there, and now he's not even going to play because of the strike. It's just one of those things where. It was just disheartening to see, but it was such a gut punch because we finally get the players playing the game, and then when they finally get to the field, they don't play the game. They go on strike. But then Colonel says, you got 48 hours <laughs> to pay back what you owe, cash transfers only. And it's just, it, it was such a crazy way to end the episode. Like, holy crap. But guys, this was a great episode. You know, it talked about mental health awareness. Um, we got Allison showing up. Brittany and Jameson, you know, finally talking about a relationship. Again, as Allison shows up, the players going on strike. Uh, it's just a lot of buildup 
about what happened over the course of the season, but you're very intrigued about what's going to happen next. So I thoroughly enjoyed the finale. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And as always, like and subscribe. And if you would like to donate to the channel, make sure you do so on PayPal or Cash App.